as promised, uh, I'm making this video. This is um, about the hashtag Me Too. Uh, I promised that in my last video. Uh, now, this is an article from a website called Inverse. Inverse Culture. Never heard of them, right? Um, but the headline of the article is 20 of the half million and counting hashtag Me Too stories of sexual assault. These stories show just how widespread the problem is. So, what we have here, right, is the claim that there's half a million stories and counting of Me Too, right? And they show how widespread the problem is. So, from half a million, they've picked 20, right? So, you would imagine then that these 20 must be beefy. They must have some you know, s some substance, something about them, you know, uh, that is, just convinces you that sexual assault is widespread against women. It's widespread and it's everywhere, you know. Uh, but when I went, I went through this article, um, and I, I have to say I'm not impressed. You see, the Me Too campaign started um, by a, a really, I mean, a really hideous woman, a black woman, right? I can't remember her name. She's got some size of fucking nose man that like f covers her face you know can't remember her fucking name and I'm not going to show a picture of her right because she's so fucking hideous that I just I just don't want to show a picture I don't want to have a picture of her on my computer that's that's it's that simple right uh, she's utterly hideous nobody would ever sexually assault this woman right ever right uh, and she started this campaign and then it took off and you get all these women Desperate to be victims, you know, sharing the hashtag, um, and because all these women who are desperate to be victims and they're sharing this hashtag, they're now using the fact that it's been shared a lot. I've also used the hashtag, but not to claim I'm a victim, right? Lots of people are using the hashtag to criticise me too. Anyway, um, it's been shared that much that the fact that it's been shared that much is now evidence that sexual harassment is widespread, so they claim, right? And that's what this article's doing, because um, they're claiming 20 of the half million stories, and these 20 stories, they show how widespread it is. Now, I'm actually only going to go through 19 of them, right? Because one of them is, like, links to, like, a full article, and I'm not fucking reading the full article, okay? I'm already doing that here. Go fuck your article. So it's really only 19, but, um... But put the old uh, spectacles on so I can read it properly. Uh, so let's go through this, right? It's from uh, by Paige Leskin, right? Let's see, let's see who Paige Leskin is. Let's see if it shows you. Uh, she's a Paige is a technology and innovation intern studying journalism at Northwestern University. Hailing from New Jersey, she can usually be found playing pickup soccer or chasing cute dogs. She has done work with USA Today, ProPublica, uh, student newspaper. Uh, no, nothing. There's nothing there that says. Nah, it's just links to her website, but there's nothing there that says I'm a hideous feminist and I fucking hate men, but so but she probably is, but it doesn't say that. They usually let it let it be known, make it obvious. Uh, this is actually from October last year, um, but I still thought I'd, I'd, I'd cover it, you know. Um, Social media became a place this week for women to unite over their experiences with sexual assault and demonstrate just how widespread the problem is among different communities. You know, she says women there, right, just to be clear. Um, races, levels of income, workplaces, ages and sexual orientation. More than a half million posts with the words Me Too have went up since actress Alyssa Milano called on women to share the phrase with this tweet Sunday afternoon. So her tweet was, um, if you've been sexually harassed or assaulted, write Me Too as a reply to this tweet. And that's when all the women jumped on board and went, well, actually, um, 30 years ago, I heard a joke that I didn't like, and a man did tell that joke. I mean, he, he, he was in the other room, and I overheard it when I walked past. But that makes me a survivor. Me too. That's that's what happened, right? Uh, and that's now evidence that it's widespread. Sexual harassment is widespread. Even though every time they talk about it, they only mention Weinstein. It's funny that, isn't it? Anyway... Um, so someone said, some twat said, uh, Me too, suggested by a friend, if all the women who have been sexually harassed or assaulted wrote Me too as a status, we might give people a sense of the magnitude of the problem. Uh, well, you think you've done that, but you've just done the complete opposite. You've, you've, 
you've made it seem that women are pathetic, you know, and they complain about the smallest little details and little things, as I'll show you. However, it seems that using Me Too to empower female identifying folks, oh for fuck's sake, female, female identifying folks, to speak against sexual assault started years before Milano's tweet. A video on Instagram depicts women's rights activist Tarana Burke, I think that's her with a big giant fat ass nose, uh, discussing her Me Too movement as a way for women to unite at a 2014 march against rape culture in Philadelphia. Uh, well, rape culture. Can, can we have a march against ghosts? Because they also don't exist. Fucking idiotic march. A march against rape culture. A march against something that we invented. Let's march against the thing that we created. We invented. And we pulled out of our arse. Let's march against that. That's, that's what happened there. And, and as I say, she's, she is a hideous beast. Look her up, right? Tarana Burke. I'm not showing you a picture of her. Seriously, look, look up Tarana Burke. And you will vomit. It's a guarantee that you will vomit. And it's not racist. It's um, it's ugliest because she's so fucking hideous. It's unbel unbelievable how hideous this woman is. No fucking way has she ever been sexually harassed. She dreams of being sexually harassed. The two words have now been used in posts by celebrities, and therefore that makes it worth a read. And notable figures in a show of support, including Deborah Messing, arsehole, uh, Sen Senator Kamala Harris, don't know who that is, Dan Amboya, don't know who that is, Anna Paquin, don't know who that is, Patricia Arquette, I know who she is, and Lady Gaga, I know who she is. Newsweek has a running list of those who have posted, if you want to check it out, nah. But some users have gone beyond the two words to share their personal stories and scrolling through a Twitter feed has become a sort of therapy session as, as well as a way to make others feel less alone. Here are some of the impactful stories. Remember this? Impactful stories, right? Uh, folks have, have, bit, have bit the bullet to share. But first remember two things. If a person didn't post, it doesn't mean it hasn't happened to them. <laughs> this, is, this is the old... Uh, M more cases go unreported is that what you're trying to convince us of nor are they required to share their story and these stories may be triggering to some oh my god we've got a trigger warning oh my god we've got a trigger warning alright oh, so the first one is um, oh I accidentally clicked on it there right piss off um, right the first one is from Cheryl Crow number one Cheryl Crow hashtag me too a manager on my first big tour as a backup singer. When I went to a lawyer, he told me to suck it up because the guy could do a lot for me. Right. What what happened? See, w when they're this vague, right, I don't know what happened. Because the thing with women these days is anything can be, be sexual assault or sexual harassment. So, so, the manager on your first big tour... And your lawyer told you to suck it up because the guy could do a lot for you. So if your lawyer is saying, just suck it up, does that mean that the manager raped you, Cheryl? Did he actually force you down and have sex with you against your will? Is that what happened? Or did he maybe lean over you one day and touch your shoulder and go, what's that you're reading? It's, I mean, because all these are the things that all get, they get conflated and we don't know which is which. So, because you're not giving any details, I'm going to go with the hand on the shoulder. That's what happened. No evidence. And by the way, see in 19... Um, I don't know, 98. Why not? Uh, Cheryl Crow stuck her vagina in my face and I was traumatised. I'm a victim. I'm a survivor. I mean, I don't have any evidence, but... Who needs evidence with the Me Too hashtag? Uh, so, could you stop doing that to people, Cheryl? It's not very nice. And you, you turn people like me into survivors. Because apparently, uh, when a woman sticks her vag in your face, uh, uh, that, that, that kills people, apparently. So I'm a survivor. Just like rape kills people. Never. And anybody who's suffered rape is now a survivor, even though rape doesn't actually kill anyone. Uh, number two, Evan Rachel Wood. Uh, don't know who that is. Uh, being raped once made it easier to be raped again. Did it? Well, I suppose if... Uh, it would make it wider. Anyway, um, I instinctually shut down. Um, my body remembered, so it protected me. 
I disappeared, hashtag me too, right, and when did this happen and who was it with and did you go to the police? Or, n no, you, you went to social media. Of course you went to social media because that's what you do when you get raped. She also follows it up with, because I was shamed and considered a party girl, I felt I deserved it. I shouldn't have been there, I shouldn't have been bad. Hashtag me too. Um, right, not enough details. So you're saying you were raped once and it made it easier to be raped again. So you were raped more than once, right? That's your claim. Nobody, was it a man or a woman that raped you? Um, when did that happen? Who was it with? Did, was there any charges pressed? No, nothing, no details, nothing at all. We don't know what happened. We've just to believe that something happened. It was a rape. We've to believe that it was probably a man that raped her, but she doesn't name the man. She just goes on social media and says she was raped. And people was, I, I was shamed and considered the party girl who shamed you. Um, I felt I deserved it. Did somebody say you deserved it, or do you just think that? Um, did it even happen? I don't know. But I remember, what I do remember is even Rachel Wood in, um, I don't know, 2004, she shoved her tits in my face and I was traumatised. I'm a survivor, hashtag me too. No evidence, I mean, just like just like her there. No evidence, nothing nothing at all. No, no evidence of this happening. But with the hashtag me too, you don't need evidence. Um, Pocky at the Disco is number three. Pocky at the Disco. Some thoughts on hashtag me too from your friendly neighbour feminist social worker part one. So, this is a post that was probably on Facebook or something that's been shared. I caught myself wondering, have I experienced anything bad enough to merit a me too post? Boom, there you go, right before I even read any further. There you go. That is what I'm talking about. They are looking to be victims. So, She's not traumatised, she's not hurt in any way, she's not been raped or sexually assaulted. She sees this hashtag and she thinks to herself, I want to be a victim too. And she thinks, have I experienced anything bad enough to merit a Me Too post? Why were you thinking that? Why were you thinking, could I get, could I get on this Me Too bandwagon, what didn't happen to me? Why were you thinking that? Stop dwelling on things that didn't even fucking happen. It's un this is what I mean. This is what almost every woman that's written in this hashtag. That's what they think. If it has anything happened to me, could I re could I get in on this? It's it's just a big scam. It's just a big scam to get attention for being a victim so that they can claim they're a survivor and hopefully get a book deal. Does catcalling count? No. Does being groped on a dance floor count? Um, for the Me Too hashtag. Uh, nah. Was that women that done it? I don't know. Uh, would my participation trivialise trivialize the experiences of people who have been through worse? Yes. Yes, I absolutely would. Because if you go and say, I was catcalled once, therefore I am a survivor, you are trivialising women who were raped. Right? That's You definitely are doing that, right? Um, and then I realised that's part of the problem. The tendency this society has to dismiss someone's experience as not bad enough, not traumatic enough, not real enough, not real enough to matter, not real enough. So what the fuck is happening here? You know, I, I imagined I was raped. Does that, is that, does that count? No, that's not real enough. Somebody's actually said to her that her experience is not real enough. So what the fuck is she, what's she making up here? Nothing will change if we persist in validating and believing a few under certain circumstances and dismissing the rest. And people who have been abused, harassed, assaulted, traumatised, refrain from speaking up or getting help because they believe what they went through doesn't count. So yes, damn it, me too. So in other words, nothing happened to her. She's one of those fat ugmos. Nothing's actually happened to her, but she wants to be a victim. So even though she knows what happened to her, which was nothing, doesn't really count. She wants to, to use the hashtag. She wants to say me too. Me too, damn it, because a man flirted with me once in, in one of my dreams. Uh, then I woke up and realised I was a fat pig and then men don't actually flirt with me, but it still counts, right? No, it's not real enough. Fucking idiot. So that's the third one. That's the third one out of 20 stories from half a million stories. That's the third one. We've still not got anything anything at all that shows that this is rampant. This is all fantasy land. That's what this is. And I'm sick of women doing this shit, by the way. 
living in fantasy land, desperate to be victims. See, see you know how how much women would improve in the men in the eyes of men, right? How much women would improve if they just stopped wanting to be victims all the time? It's tiresome, it's pathetic, it makes you look ridiculous, and it makes men avoid you. Men don't want to be near you because they think, oh, well, she says that's rape when it's clearly not. What if I try to chat her up, you know, and maybe I mess it up a bit, even though all the pressure's on me anyway because I'm a man to make the first move. What if I make the first move and I mess it up and then the next thing you know, I'm on a Me Too hashtag and then I get fired from my job, you know, and, and you know, I, I can't get another job, you know, it's just, it's just, a, it's mental. Men don't even want to talk to you and tell you a joke anymore because you might take it the wrong fucking way because you're desperate to be victims. Stop wanting to be a victim. And the fucking thing that bugs me the most about you cunty bitches that do this is you don't want to go through what it takes to be a victim. You just want to be a victim. You just want to be seen as a victim, but you don't want to actually go through what it takes to be a victim. That's what annoys me so much. It's not like you it's not like you want to be raped. You just want the status of being a rape victim or, or and it's disgusting. You are vile and disgusting. Stop doing it. And it's, this is not to feminists, this is to women. Stop fucking doing it. Um, the fourth one, Sam Donovan, is that a guy? Hashtag me too. Sexual assault affects the LGBTQ plus people as much as it does straight. <gasps> he forgot A and D and A and P. What? Uh, and the second T. What a bigot. What a bigot. Why is he so full of hate? None of us are alone. All of us can help stop it. See, what this is, is this is a guy who's probably known for being gay, right? Um, and he's putting his hand up and he's going, oh, well, 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 uh, us two, we, we, we're victims as well. Can we get in on this? That's all that, that's all that is. We, we're victims too. Don't forget us. I know it's all about women, but we're victims too. <laughs> Fuck off. So again, nothing, uh, so he's saying there, sexual assault affects the LGBT people as much as it does straight, he means women. Uh, none of us are alone, all of us can help stop it. Right. I'm sorry, wait a minute. I'm sorry, what, wasn't this called the 20 of the stories of sexual assault? These stories show how widespread the problem is. So his tweet saying sexual assault affects LGBTQ people lets us know how rampant sexual assault is. How? He's, he's just making a comment. He's not telling a story. There's nothing in this. Nothing at all. I'm still presuming, by the way, that this Sam Donovan's a man. Um, but nothing in this is telling us. Not, he's, not, he's not saying, oh, I was molested or whatever, or I was raped in a, a, a toilet, you know? Nothing like that. Nothing. There's no story there. That's not a story. That's just a tweet. A comment on a tweet. It's nothing. And we have to take this shit seriously. Number five, Laura Duval, two tweets. Um, hashtag me too. Coercion is rape. No, no, no it's not. It's, it's absolutely not. Um, talking someone into it is rape. N no, that that's that's not what rape is. If you love me, you would. Is rape. No, that's that's not rape either. That's um, totally not rape at all. Threatening to cheat if told no is rape. No, that's 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 not rape. Still not rape. And uh, she continues, just as much as sobbing no is rape. No, that's that's not rape. All of these have happened to me. Oh, so you weren't raped. Only one was by physical force. That would be rape if it was genuinely by physical force but by what you've said so far I don't believe you uh, I'm a survivor we are valid <laughs> no 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 you, you don't see this is what I mean they, they, they complain that you know that they, they get blamed for trivialising real victims that's what she's doing now now women are grown adults right they're not toddlers and that, that's not what they are coercion is rape no just say no Talking someone into it is rape. No, just say no. If you love me, you would is rape. No, 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 just say no. Threatening to cheat if told no is rape. No, just say no. Go and cheat then. Fuck off. 
All of these are cunty behaviour. Sure, so it's apart from coercion. Every, how is coercion not part of dating, really, at the end of the day? But um, talking someone into it, how is that in any way? You know, that's not cunty either. But if you love me, you would. That's that's a cunty move. Threatening to cheat if they're told no, that's a cunty move. And when people do that, you say no. Turn them the fuck off. You're a grown woman. Turn them the fuck off. That's not rape. So that she's trivialising rape here by making all these things rape when they're clearly not. I mean, talking someone into it is rape. Isn't that what happens in every fucking relationship? Men and women? Come on, man. This is ridiculous. This is terrible. This is absolutely awful. Uh, sobbing no is, is is rape. I don't know who's doing that, but that's kind of a shitty move if it's like trying to put you on a guilt trip. Uh, shitty move. Shitty behaviour. But it's not rape. And they've all happened to her. So luckily for Laura Duval, Laura Duval has not been raped. Fifth one, and we've still not got anywhere. Let's see if the sixth sixth one can uh, let us know how bad this is. Alison Tolman. Hashtag me too. Crowded tram at Disney. Right, so you're in Disneyland, okay. Sat a row behind my family. Man kept his hand on my thigh the whole ride. You're sitting, your family's right there and you don't say anything. You're sitting the row behind your family and you don't say, Mum, Dad, this man's got his hand on my leg. You don't say that. And that's pretty strange. Um, uh, stroking the fine hair there. His friend looked on. Think I was 11, but scared to confirm dates of that trip with my mum because I never told anyone. Us two, all of us. No, I'm, I'm sorry, your mum's right there and you, you don't say anything. What? Two men, one man's uh, watching as another man is is grabbing your leg and you're 11 and your mum knows that you're sitting behind her next to a strange guy and, and she doesn't check on you, nothing, nothing at all. Uh, sorry Alison, I'm going to have to go with, um, I don't believe you, I think you're lying. I think you just want to be part of this hashtag because you want to be a victim and you made that shit up. And you even say there, uh, I think I was 11, but scared to confirm dates. Scared to confirm the dates. In other words, it didn't happen. You're a liar. You're a fucking liar. I don't believe you. Number seven, Gavin C. Brown. Me too. English teacher said, I'd grow to be a rapist because I was molested. Did the English teacher say that, though? Or did the English teacher say that uh, there's a good chance that because you were molested... How did your English teacher know that, by the way? Why are you telling your English teacher that? Mm, well, lots of questions here. But anyway, so your English teacher found out you were molested for some reason. I don't know why. And your English teacher said to you that you'll grow to be a rapist. Didn't they say that because you were molested, there's a chance that you'll grow to molest people? Because that's often how it works. You know, Isn't that what was said? Or did they just, in front of the whole class, say, you, you that was molested that told me that for some reason... You're gonna be a rapist. Is that really what? Is that really what happened, Gavin? Really, Gavin? Is that what happened? He didn't. He didn't molest you, though. It wasn't him that molested you, or her. Probably her, because it's a teacher. I attempted suicide but failed. <coughs> Attention seeking. Uh, grew up and became an English teacher. Right. I'm sorry. Where's this? Where's the story? Where's the story here about you being? Right, because you, you say you were molested. Where's that story? That's the story we want to hear. That's the story that's related to me too. Not your English teacher saying that you'll grow up to be a rapist, which didn't happen, did it? I mean, not not only did it... Uh, what I'm saying is, the English teacher saying that didn't happen. And you being a rapist, that didn't happen, did it? So, none of this happened. But if you were molested, talk about that on the Me Too hashtag. Not, oh by the way, I became an English teacher. That's humble bragging. That's what that's called. That's it's, 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 it's a form of humble bragging, you know. Uh, and, and I don't believe you, Gavin. I think you're. I think you're bullshitting. I think you're bullshitting about the whole thing. So therefore, I'm not going to believe you were molested either, because you've bullshitted all the way through that tweet. I don't believe you're an English teacher. Um, and anyway, and but another thing as well, by the way. Uh, oh, let's see, what kind of English teacher writes ink teacher? I don't believe you, mate. I don't believe you. I think you're a liar. Aye. Aye, you're a liar. Uh, number eight. Bjork. Somebody actually who I know. Not personally. 
Uh, this is from Facebook. I am inspired by the women everywhere who are speaking up online to tell about my experience with a Danish director. Uh, because I come from a country that is one of the world's place closest to equality between the sexes and at the time I came from position of strength in the music world with hard earned independence. It was extremely clear to me when I walked into the actress's profession that my humiliation and role Oh no, this is a fucking sorry. I've got to, I've got to continue this shit onto Facebook because it says see more, so right now I need to fucking go on here. Ah, uh, here we go. Oh Jesus, right, okay. Oh, it's, okay, it's not that long. Right. Um it was extremely clear to me when I walked into the actress's profession that my humiliation and role as a lesser sexually harassed being was the norm and set in stone with a director and a staff of dozens who enabled it and encouraged it. I became aware of of that it is a universal thing that a director can touch and harass his actresses at will and the institution of film allows it. I mean, the, the director can touch the actors as well. You know, the, I mean, not in a sexually sexual manner, but they're allowed to touch and say, no, 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 put your arm up like this and do it like that. No, no, when you point, I want you to point that way. No, no, see when you're sitting, can you sit down like that? Let me see your leg, move it, right, like that. They're allowed to do all that because they're the fucking director, but they're not allowed to be groping you. So I don't know what you mean here. Um, when I turned the director down repeatedly, he sulked and punished me and created for his team an impressive net of illusion where I was framed as the difficult one. Because of, because was he a magician as well? Because of my strength, my great team, and because I had nothing to, to lose. Oh, it's, maybe English isn't a first language. Uh, having no ambitions in the acting world, I walked away from it and recovered in a year's time. I am worried, though, that other actresses working with the same man did not. The director was fully aware of this game, and I am sure of that. The film he made after was based on his experiences with me, because I was the first one that stood up to him and didn't let him get away with it. And in my opinion, he had a more fair and meaningful relationship with his actresses after my confrontation, so there is hope. Let's hope this statement supports the actresses and actors all over. Let's stop this. There is a wave of change in the world. Kindness, Bjork. Right. I, I, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to believe that that happened. Our English isn't the best here. I'm not having a go. I think it's probably a second language. Um, I'm willing to believe that happened uh, because I think we've all... We all know that that goes on, you know, and in, in in Hollywood that with directors and stuff, we all know that they kind of use their power, the casting couch as a thing. Um, so okay, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt and I'll believe her one. But again, it's not really that doesn't prove it's widespread. It's just okay. I believe it happened to her. I believe she stood up and said, you know, no, I'm not standing for this shit. Okay, I believe that. I'll take that. Uh, number nine, Halle Amons. Uh, no idea who that is. Um, no blue tick, so that, according to Twitter, means she's a nobody. Um, hashtag me too. If you know a woman, she has a story, or two, or a dozen, and so many of us feel like our experiences don't count. Right. How is that a story about sexual assault? Because it's, it's not a story about sexual assault. What it is is a tweet saying that women have stories about sexual assault, but she's not actually giving us a story. And this whole article is about all oh, these stories will show how widespread it is. That's not a fucking story. That's just a tweet that says, uh, if you know a woman, she has a story or two or a dozen. It doesn't... That's not a story. Nothing, nothing there makes me think that women are getting raped all the time or whatever, or sexual assault is rampant. That doesn't prove anything. I mean, I could say the same thing. If you know a man, he has a story about a woman abusing him, you know, that doesn't mean it's rampant. It's fucking bullshit, this. Pure bullshit. Number 10, Sarah McBride. She has got a blue tick, so she must be somebody, somebody I don't know. And it's just taken two of her 17 tweets. I stayed silent because I worried that when people hear trans person and sexual assault in the same story, their minds would pass over the reality and immediately go to the dangerous myth of the trans bathroom predator. Right. So, okay, so something happened to you, apparently, and you stayed silent about it because of what happened to you. Who ha who did it happen with? Where did it happen? When did it happen? You know? And by the way, Sarah McBride... When she had a penis, she stuck it in my face, and I'm traumatised, I think this was in 2002, uh, and I'm traumatised and I'm a survivor. 
We can all do this shit, by the way. We can all just say stuff. Doesn't make it true. Number 11. Um, Lynette J. Davis. Me too. Oh, for fuck's sake. This is another one. See more. See if this is fucking two pages long. I'm not reading it. There's another one on Facebook. There we go. Oh, fuck. Right. Me too. Had a cardiologist who was my employer. Trapped me inside an office. Locked the door and whipped his penis out for me to touch it. Paralysed initially, I knew I had to get out of the room because I was the only person in the entire building. Uh, I became angry, demanded that he unlock the door and then I threatened him that he would lose his medical licence. He thought that he could slip me a $100 bill to keep my mouth shut. When I was a new waiter at a restaurant, waiter? Lynette? You mean waitress? Uh, one of the team leaders who was training me walked up behind me with an erection and told me to read the Kama Sutra with him after the shift was over. Um, I think this is bullshit. When I was 18, I was tricked to go to a swimming pool area at night by a trusted head lifeguard. How do you get tricked to go to a swimming pool? He took me into the shower room area for a mini tour and I noticed an entire camera with tripod set up behind one of the stalls. My intuition told me to leave. I found out later he takes girls there to videotape them while having sex with them. He was the son of a powerful, egotistical, prominent lawyer. And these are only the ones that immediately spring to mind. I, th I think it's bullshit. I think it's bullshit. Um, used to feel too embarrassed to admit this shit. Nah, okay, this is this is bullshit. I'm making this up. So I can totally understand why people wouldn't come forward, but it's not my, our fault. I, we, didn't do anything wrong. And even though I, we, are not necessarily damaged by these things, that still doesn't make them okay. Mm, nah, I, I think this, this is just one pile of bullshit, that's what I think, that's what it sounds like to me, it sounds like that, because it's too it's it's like, it sounds made up, you know, or this guy was, this cardiologist whipped out his penis for me to touch it, and then when I said no, he gave me a hundred dollar bill to shut up, you know, it just sounds like how can I make this sound as sleazy as fuck, you know what I mean, and, and when, the, when the waiter at the restaurant came up behind her, he already had an erection and read the Kama Sutra with me. I just, I don't know, it just sounds, it just sounds like too sleazy, like she's made it up, like from her feminist mind, you know. The veil is being lifted as the patriarchal mechanism that evokes male dominance over women, feminist, is being brought forth to the light now. Everything is coming into balance and the universe is doing its own internal karmic cleansing. The feminine rises, oh my God, this is bullshit, right? They, that says it all, the feminine rises, male dominance over women, Capital letters. Every that is that whole post is complete and utter made up pile of shite, and I don't believe you, Lynette. And by the way, um, Lynette once stuck her vagina in my face. And um, when was that again, Lynette? When did you do that again? Uh, I don't know, nineteen ninety seven, something like that. I can't remember. Uh, but I, uh, it, it was, it was uh, about 1997, I think, and I'm traumatized by it, and I'm a victim, and I'm a survivor. Next, number 12. That, by the way, number 11 was just one complete pile of made-up shite. Uh, number 12. I've lost, this is Sarah. I've lost count of how many times I've lied and told a guy I have a boyfriend because he wouldn't take a simple no for an answer. Right. But, but you weren't sexually abused. You're using hashtag me too, but you weren't actually raped, sexually abused or harassed. A guy just chatted you up. That's it. That's your story. That gets in. They had half a million stories to choose from, and that gets in there at number twelve. You see how I mean, you see how shit this is. You see how how much of a pile of shit this is. I just I just don't buy it. I don't buy it. Lies, pure lies. And by the way, there was a time, um, I don't know, two thousand and seven. Sarah uh, kept hitting on me at a bar, and I told her no. She just kept on and on. Do you know, it got to the point where I had to kid on I had a wife. Just to get just to get rid of her. And she still didn't give up. Remember that, Sarah? Do you remember that? 1990... Oh, no, no, that was the other one. 2007, wasn't it, Sarah? That's right, I remember. And I'm traumatised by it. Number 13, Jenny Slate. Um, because I thought people would blame me or my sense of humour, which they did, by the way, uh, it was scary and degrading to speak out. Harassment at work. Right, okay. No specifics. No specifics. Right. 
Uh, so it, it was scary and degrading to speak out uh, regarding harassment at work. Right, no, no specifics, just we've just to presume that she's telling the truth. Uh, I don't presume, I think you're lying. I don't believe you. Uh, next, oh, and see Jenny Slate, I used to work with Jenny Slate in, uh, I don't know, 2001. And uh, she used to harass me at work all the time, you know. All the time she used to harass me. I mean, I don't have any evidence, but who needs evidence when you're using hashtag me too? Number 14, Kea Scodelario. What a name. Uh, it's taken me 13 years to say me too. He is still protected by family members in Brazil. They've told lies to papers to try to silence me. Right. Not enough specifics there. That is not a story. You know, that's the, they've, they've had half a million stories to choose from, and this is one they picked. And n nothing. Absolutely nothing. He is still protected. Who's still protected? Name him. Uh, by family members in Brazil. They've told lies to papers. What papers? What lies? To silence you. Silence you for what? What happened? It's taken you 13 years to say me too. 13 years to say me to, to attention seek. Well done to you. I remember when I was in Brazil and I met her and she stuck her tits in my face. I think that was in uh, 2000, I don't know, 4, whatever. Um, uh, this one here, this is, a, this is a big one. Number 15, Alex Audrey. Uh, here's the thing, we're not just talking about monsters in alleys who threaten our lives. We're talking about being too drunk to consent. Don't drink then. Uh, and that boy who didn't realise he was doing anything wrong because too drunk to consent doesn't always mean being passed out in someone else's bed. Stop drinking so much. Sometimes it means not knowing you're too drunk and saying yes when you would have said no if you hadn't been drinking. Right, let me just stop there. Do you know how many men have been in this position? Do you know how many men have uh, woken up the next day, realised what they had sex with, and then thought, oh my God, I would never have had sex with her if I was sober. Almost every man has a story like this. Many have multiple. It happens thousands of times every weekend just in my city. So so don't come at me with your bullshit that you were too drunk to consent. This happens to every, everybody. Be an adult. Take responsibility. Realise you made a mistake. You made the mistake of being too drunk and telling a man yes. What's a man supposed to do? What's, a man, what's he supposed to do? Go... Well, uh, she probably means no. No, that's on you. You got too drunk. If you get too drunk to consent, that's on you. Stop drinking so fucking much. Get friends who tell you you're drinking too much. Put a limit on it. You know, only t or you can't say tell women only take so much money with you because they don't have to buy drinks. Um, but stop, stop drinking so much. That's on you. So this this problem that you have is there's a clear solution that you're in charge of. Stop fucking drinking so much. Then you won't get too drunk to consent. Then you won't say yes when you mean no. Stop it. If it's such a problem for you, stop it. Or keep doing it and accept it as part of your lifestyle that as an adult, you, these things happen. By the way, it happens to men all the time. All the time. They go to bed with Claudia Schiffer, but they wake up with Shrek. It happens all the fucking time. All men have a story about this. And you never hear us crying about it. Ever. Only cunts like you cry about it because you want to be a victim. It's pathetic. Carrying on. We're talking about men harassing us in our workplaces. Telling jokes. Um, to the point where we feel like we need a male co-worker to walk us to our cars at night. Bollocks. We're talking about men in clubs or bars or anywhere really who feel as if it's okay to put their hands on our bodies unprovoked and unwelcome. Now that's against the law. Even if it's just grabbing your arm or something. That is a terrifying moment for a woman. It's also against the law, by the way. Uh, we're talking about men who yell things at us from their cars, and we're too afraid to stand up to them because what happens if they get out of their car? Yes, because a man who shouts from his car that he thinks you're attractive or whatever he's shouting uh, is obviously uh, violent. Obviously, because you wouldn't want to stand up to him because he's going to get out of the car and rape you, right? Fucking unreal. Um, we're talking about being told that you have to be careful what you wear. Well, you do. You do. I mean, don't don't wear fucking uh, flat shoes when it's icy outside. You'll fall all over the place. You know, wear something about a grip. Of course, you have to be careful with what you wear. You nutter. We're talking about being harassed at work to the point where we have to wear a fake engagement ring to abate some of it. Never happened. Um, 
We're talking about our friends, our family members, our classmates, and monsters and alleys threatening our lives, so yeah, me too. Right, so you've never been a victim in your life, and the only time you were a victim was when you drank too much, which you're in control of. So the only thing that made you a victim is you. Stop fucking drinking so much if it bothers you that you end up having sex with a man that you wouldn't have had sex with if you were sober. Stop it. Just as, as the same goes for men. All those men out there, if you don't like waking up with Shrek, stop fucking drinking so much. But the thing is, I don't need to say that to men. Because men already know that. They know that. They just don't complain about it. So no, I don't buy your story. I think you're full of shit. And I don't think you're a victim. You're an, an adult who made bad decisions and those bad decisions had consequences. Imagine that. Welcome to the world of a man. Uh, decisions you make have consequences. That's right. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? Number 16. Um, I was 21. He was a friend. Trusted him. No one believed me. Destroyed me. Effected me. Hardened me. Taught me. Rose up. Survived. Me too. Survived. Rape doesn't kill anyone. So what was it? Nobody, no one believed you. It destroyed you. It effect, it affected you. Effected you. It hardened me. Taught me. Rose up. Survived. That's not a story. No, you're not even giving us any specifics here. Nothing. It's just that's almost like a poem. It's rubbish. Um, next number seventeen. Najwa Zebian, whoever that is. Um, Najwa Zebian. Hashtag me too. And I was blamed for it. Blamed for what? I was told not to talk about it. Talk about what? I was told that it wasn't that bad. What wasn't that bad? I was told to get over it. Get over what? Nothing. No specifics. But this is one of the stories that makes us believe that it's rampant. No, sorry, I don't buy it. I do not buy it. And by the way, see Najwa Zebian, right? See in, um, I don't know, 2012. Um, see what she done to me? I got blamed for it. You know, and, and I was told not to talk about it. You know, and I was as I was told that it wasn't that bad, and I was told to get over it. Remember, Najwa, remember that what you done to me that I'm not giving specifics about. Remember, uh, I remember in 2012 what you did, and I'm a survivor because of it. The next one is uh, the full fucking article. I'm not fucking go fuck yourself. I'm not reading that shit. I wrote this article 17 years ago. Don't care. But straight on to number 19. Um, this Javier Munoz, me too. I don't know if means anything coming from a gay man, but it's happened multiple times. What's happened? You've been sexually harassed or assaulted? Right, okay. Right, any specifics, Javier? Any specifics at all? No. Well, that's not a story I can take and go, see, told you, look, it's rampant, there's evidence. That's not evidence of anything. That's just evidence of you just writing a pile of shit that has happened to you. It doesn't mean anything. Multiple times as well. <sighs> So, again, meaningless. Meaningless. Uh, number 20, the last one. Ella Purnell. Me too. Hasn't every woman. That's it. That's one of the stories. Out of the half a million stories, that's the one they picked for number 20 that's supposed to make us think, oh my God, this is happening everywhere. Me too. Hasn't every woman. But that's it. That's not a story. That's nothing. Nothing at all. Like, what, what a pile of shit. Now, this is 20... Okay, 19, because I missed one out, because I'm not reading an article. Uh, 19 so-called stories that are supposed to make us... Remember they said in the headline? Let's go back to the headline here. Um, these stories show just how widespread the problem is. But, but they didn't show that. They just showed one pile of shit. I believe the Bjork one... Um, because I do believe, I believe that Bjork is the type of woman that would stand up and say, no, I'm not having this. You know, I believe that, right? And she's not, she's not even really claiming to be a victim. She's more saying that what happened to her probably happens to women that don't have the guts to stand up and say no. That's why I'm more willing to believe it, because she's not crying about being a victim. She's more or less saying, look, I stood up for myself, a lot of women won't. So I, I'm willing to believe that. The rest of them just come across one pile of shit, desperate for attention, and most of them are not even, there's no specifics, no stories, nothing, you know. Now that was from October, maybe now, being January, maybe we've got some more stories now, but I have actually been looking at the Me Too hashtag, I keep checking up on it, and it's nothing, we're getting nothing from this. The, all they keep mentioning, they keep mentioning Harvey Weinstein, and that's it. 
and the rest is just filler, you know, a load of crap, a load of pish that doesn't mean anything. And it's not enough for me to say uh, definitely why women suffer from sexual harassment all over the place. No, it's not enough. I, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Not for a fucking second. It's not as widespread and rampant as you try to make it out to be. And most of the people using this hashtag um, claiming the victims are liars. They just want to be victims and they don't want to go through what it takes to be a victim. They just want the victim status because they're cunts. And I, for one, I, it's not just now, it's years ago. I am sick of it. I'm sick of women playing this victim card. I am so fucking sick of it. It's every week we've got a new hashtag for women to play victim. Every fucking week. It, it's just, it's getting tiresome. And I, I've fucking had enough of it. But it just keeps happening and it won't fucking stop. Uh, but I'll stop. I'll leave it there for now because the video's not on long enough. So thank you very much for listening. <laughs> Until next time. The, all these are the things that all get they get conflated and we don't know which is which. So because you're not given any details, I'm going to go with the hand on the shoulder. That's what happened. No evidence. And by the way, see in 19... Um, I don't know, 98. Why not? Uh, Cheryl Crow stuck her vagina in my face and I was traumatised. I'm a victim. I'm a survivor. I mean, I don't have any evidence, but who needs evidence with the Me Too hashtag? Uh, so, could you stop doing that to people, Cheryl? It's not very nice. And you, you turn people like me into survivors. Because apparently, uh, when a woman sticks her vag in your face, uh, uh, that, that, that kills people, apparently. So I'm a survivor. Just like rape kills people. Never. And anybody who's suffered rape is now a survivor, even though rape doesn't actually kill anyone. Uh, number two... Evan Rachel Wood, uh, don't know who that is, uh, being raped once made it easier to be raped again. Did it? Well, I suppose if uh, it would make it wider. Right, anyway, um, I instinctually shut down. Um, my body remembered, so it protected me. I disappeared. Hashtag me too. Right, uh, when did this happen and who was it with? And did you go to the police? Oh, no, you, you, you went to social media. Of course you went to social media, because that's what you do when you get raped. She also follows it up with, Because I was shamed and considered a party girl, I felt I deserved it. I shouldn't have been there. I shouldn't have been bad. Hashtag me too. Um, right, not enough details. So you're saying you were raped once, and it made it easier to be raped again. So you were raped more than once, right? That's your claim. Nobody, was it a man or a woman that raped you? Um, when did that happen? Who was it with? Does, was there any charges pressed? No, nothing. No details, nothing at all. We don't know what happened. We've just to believe that something happened. It was a rape. We've to believe that it was probably a man that raped her. But she doesn't name the man. She just goes on social media and says she was raped. And people was, I, I was shamed and considered a party girl. Who shamed you? Um, I felt I deserved it. Did somebody say you deserved it? Or do you just think that? Um, did it even happen? I don't know. But I remember, what I do remember is even Rachel Wood in, um, I don't know, 2004, she shoved her tits in my face and I was traumatised. I'm a survivor. Hashtag me too. No evidence. I mean, just like just like her there. No evidence. Nothing, nothing at all. No, no evidence of this happening. But... With the hashtag me too, you don't need evidence. Um, Pocky at the disco is number three. Pocky at the disco. Some thoughts on hashtag me too from your friendly neighbour feminist social worker part one. So, this is a post that was probably on Facebook or something that's been shared. I caught myself wondering, have I experienced anything bad enough to merit a me too post? Boom, there you go, right? Before I even read any further, there you go. That is what I'm talking about. They are looking to be victims. So, she's not traumatised, she's not hurt in any way, she's not been raped or sexually assaulted. She sees this hashtag and she thinks to herself, I want to be a victim too. And she thinks, have I experienced anything bad enough to merit a Me Too post? Why were you thinking that? Why were you thinking, could I get, could I get on this Me Too bandwagon? What didn't happen to me? Why were you thinking that? Stop dwelling on things that didn't even fucking happen. It's un this is what I mean. This is what almost every woman that's written in this hashtag, that's what they think. If it has anything happened to me, could I, could I get in on this? 
It's, it's just a big scam. It's just a big scam to get attention for being a victim so that they can claim they're a survivor and hopefully get a book deal. Does catcalling count? No. Does being groped on a dance floor count? Um, for the Me Too hashtag? Uh, nah. Was that women that done it? I don't know. Uh, would my participation trivialise trivialli the experiences of people who have been through worse? Yes. Yes, I absolutely would. Because if you go and say, I was catcalled once, therefore I am a survivor, you are trivialising women who were raped. Right, that's, you definitely are. Nothing in this. Nothing at all. I'm still presuming, by the way, that Sam Donovan's a man. Um, but nothing in this is telling, it's not, he's not, he's not saying, oh, I was molested or whatever, or I was raped in a, a, a toilet, you know, nothing like that. Nothing. There's no story there. That's not a story, that's just a tweet. A comment on a tweet. It's nothing. And we have to take this shit seriously. Number five. Laura Duval, two tweets. Um, hashtag me too. Coercion is rape. No, no, no it's not. It's, it's absolutely not. Um, talking someone into it is rape. N no, that that's that's not what rape is. If you love me, you would. Is rape. No, that's that's not rape either. That's um, totally not rape at all. Threatening to cheat if told. No, is rape. No, that's 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 not rape. Still not rape. And uh, she continues, just as much as sobbing no is rape. No, that's that's not rape. All of these have happened to me. Oh, so you weren't raped. Only one was by physical force. That would be rape if it was genuinely by physical force. But by what you've said so far, I don't believe you. Uh, I'm a survivor. We are valid. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you don't see. This is what I mean. They, they, they complain that you know that they, they get blamed for trivialising real victims. That's what she's doing there. Now, women are grown adults, right? They're not toddlers, and that, that's not what they are. Coercion is rape. No, just say no. Talking someone into it is rape. No, just say no. If you love me, you would is rape. No, no, no. Just say. No. Threatening to cheat if told no is rape. No, just say no. Go and cheat then. Fuck off. All of these are cunty behaviour. Sure, it's wrong. It's apart from coercion. Every, how is coercion not part of dating, really, at the end of the day? But um, talking someone into it, how is that in any way? You know, that's not cunty either. But if you love me, you would. That's, that's a cunty move. Threatening to cheat if they're told no, that's a cunty move. And when people do that, you say no. Turn the fuck off. You're a grown woman, tell them to fuck off. That's not rape. So that she's trivialising rape here by making all these things rape when they're clearly not. I mean, talking someone into it is rape. Isn't that what happens in every fucking relationship? Men and women? Come on, man, this is ridiculous. This is terrible. This is absolutely awful. Uh, sobbing no is, uh, is rape. I don't know who's doing that, but that's kind of a shitty move if it's like trying to put you on a guilt trip. Uh, shitty move, shitty behaviour, but it's not rape. And they've all happened to her. So luckily for Laura Duval, Laura Duval has not been raped. Fifth one, and we've still not got anywhere. Let's see if the sixth sixth one can uh, let us know how bad this is. Alison Tolman. Hashtag me too. Crowded tram at Disney. Right, so you're in Disneyland, okay. Sat a row behind my family. Man kept his hand on my thigh the whole ride. You're sitting, your family's right there and you don't say anything. You're sitting the row behind your family and you don't say, Mum, Dad, this man's got his hand on my leg. You don't say that. And that's pretty strange. Um, uh, stroking the fine hair there. His friend looked on. Think I was a loving, but scared to confirm dates of that trip with my mum because I never told anyone. Us two, all of us. No, I'm, I'm sorry, your mum's right there and you, you don't say anything. What? Two men, one man's uh, watching as another man is, is grabbing your leg and you're a loving and your mum knows that you're sitting behind her next to a strange guy and, and she doesn't check on you, nothing? Nothing at all? Uh, sorry, Alison, I'm going to have to go with um, 
I don't believe you. I think you're lying. I think you just want to be part of this hashtag because you want to be a victim and you made that shit up. And you even say there, uh, I think I was 11, but scared to confirm dates. Scared to confirm the dates. In other words, um, 30 years ago, I had a joke that I didn't like and a man did tell that joke. I mean, he, he, he was in the other room and I overheard it when I walked past. But that makes me a survivor. Me too. That's, that's what happened, right? Uh, and that's now evidence that it's widespread, sexual harassment is widespread, even though every time they talk about it they only mention Weinstein. It's funny that, isn't it? Anyway, um, so someone said, some twat said, uh, Me Too, suggested by a friend, if all the women who have been sexually harassed or assaulted wrote Me Too as a status, we might give people a sense of the magnitude of the problem. Uh, well, you think you've done that, but you've just done the complete opposite. You've, you've, you've made it seem that women are pathetic. You know, and they complain about the smallest little details and little things, as I'll show you. However, it seems that using Me Too to empower female identifying folks, oh for fuck's sake, female, female identifying folks, to speak against sexual assault started years before Milano's tweet. A video on Instagram depicts women's rights activist Tarana Burke, I think that's her with a big giant fat ass nose. Uh, discussing her Me Too movement as a way for women to unite at a 2014 march against rape culture in Philadelphia. Uh, well, rape culture. C- can we have a march against ghosts? Because they also don't exist. Fucking idiotic march. March against rape culture. A march against something that we invented. Let's march against the thing that we created, we invented, and we pulled out of our arse. Let's march against that. That's that's what happened there, and, and as I say, she's she is a hideous beast. Look her up, right, Tarana Burke. I'm not showing you a picture of her. Seriously, look look up Tarana Burke, and you will vomit. It's a guarantee that you will vomit, and it's not racist. It's um, it's ugliest because she's so fucking hideous. It's unbel- unbelievable how hideous this woman is. No fucking way has she ever been sexually harassed. She dreams of being sexually harassed. The two words have now been used in posts by celebrities and therefore that makes it worth a read. And notable figures in a show of support including Deborah Messing, arsehole, uh, Senator Kamala Harris, don't know who that is, Dan Amboyer, don't know who that is, Anna Paquin, don't know who that is, Patricia Arquette, I know who she is, and Lady Gaga, I know who she is. Newsweek has a running list of those who have posted, if you want to check it out, nah. But some users have gone beyond the two words to share their personal stories, and scrolling through a Twitter feed has become a sort of therapy session, as as well as a way to make others feel less alone. Here are some of the impactful stories, remember this, impactful stories, right? Uh, folks have, have bit have bit the bullet to share but first remember two things if a person didn't post it doesn't mean it hasn't happened to them (laughs) this is this is the old uh, more cases go unreported is that what you're trying to convince us of nor are they required to share their story and these stories may be triggering to some oh my god we've got a trigger warning oh my god we've got a trigger warning alright so the first one is um, oh I accidentally clicked on it there Right, piss off. Um, right, the first one is from Cheryl Crow. Number one, Cheryl Crow. Hashtag me too. A manager on my first big tour as a backup singer. When I went to a lawyer, he told me to suck it up because the guy could do a lot for me. Right. What what happened? See, w- when they're this vague, right, I don't know what happened because the thing with women these days is Anything can be be sexual assault or sexual harassment. So, so the manager on your first big tour and your lawyer told you to suck it up because the guy could do a lot for you. So, if your lawyer is saying just suck it up, does that mean that the manager raped you, Cheryl? Did he actually force you down and have sex with you against your will? Is that what happened, or did he maybe lean over you one day and touch your shoulder and go, "What's that you're reading?" It's, I mean, because he's doing that, right? Um, and then I realised that's part of the problem. The tendency this society has to dismiss someone's experience as not bad enough, not traumatic enough, not real enough, not real enough 
to matter. Not real enough. So what the fuck is happening here? You know, I, I imagined I was raped. Does that, is that, does that count? No, that's not real enough. Somebody's actually said to her that her experience is not real enough. So what the fuck is she, what's she making up here? Nothing will change if we persist in validating and believing a few under certain circumstances and dismissing the rest. And people who have been abused, harassed, assaulted, traumatised, refrain from speaking up or getting help because they believe what they went through doesn't count. So yes, damn it, me too. So in other words, nothing happened to her. She's one of those fat ugmos. Nothing's actually happened to her, but she wants to be a victim, so... Even though she knows what happened to her, which was nothing, doesn't really count. She wants to, to use the hashtag. She wants to say, me too. Me too, damn it, because a man flirted with me once in, in one of my dreams. Uh, then I woke up and realised I was a fat pig, and then men don't actually flirt with me, but it still counts, right? No, it's not real enough, fucking idiot. So that's the third one. That's the third one out of 20 stories from half a million stories that's the third one. We've still not got anything, anything at all that shows that this is rampant. This is all fantasy land. That's what this is. And I'm sick of women doing this shit, by the way. Living in fantasy land, desperate to be victims. See, see you know how, how much women would improve in the, men, in the eyes of men, right? How much women would improve if they just stopped wanting to be victims all the time? It's tiresome. It's pathetic, it makes you look ridiculous, and it makes men avoid you. Men don't want to be near you because they think, oh, what well, she says that's rape when it's clearly not. What if I try to chat her up, you know, and maybe I mess it up a bit, even though all the pressure's on me anyway because I'm a man to make the first move. What if I make the first move and I mess it up, and then the next thing you know, I'm on a Me Too hashtag, and then I get fired from my job, you know, and, and you know, I, I can't get another job, you know, it's just. It's just, a, it's mental. Men don't even want to talk to you and tell you a joke anymore because you might take it the wrong fucking way because you're desperate to be victims. Stop wanting to be a victim. And the fucking thing that bugs me the most about you cunty bitches that do this is you don't want to go through what it takes to be a victim. You just want to be a victim. You just want to be seen as a victim, but you don't want to actually go through what it takes to be a victim. That's what annoys me so much. It's not like you, it's not like you want to be raped. You just want the status of being a rape victim, or, or and it's disgusting. You are vile and disgusting. Stop doing it. And it's this is not to feminists. This is to women. Stop fucking doing it. Um, the fourth one, Sam Donovan. Is that a guy? Hashtag Me Too. Sexual assault affects the LGBTQ plus people as much as it does straight. <gasps> he forgot A and D and A and P. What? I, and the second T. What a bigot. What a bigot. Why is he so full of hate? None of us are alone. All of us can help stop it. See, what this is, is this is a guy who's probably known for being gay, right? Um, and he's putting his hand up and he's going, oh, well, 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 uh, us too. We, we, we're victims as well. Can we get in on this? That's all that, that's all that is. We, we're victims too. Don't forget us. I know it's all about women, but we're victims too. <laughs> Fuck off. So again, nothing... Uh, so he's saying there, sexual assault affects the LGBT people as much as it does straight. It means women. Uh, none of us are alone. All of us can help stop it. Right. I'm sorry, wait a minute. I'm sorry, what, wasn't this called the 20 of the stories of sexual assault? These stories show how widespread the problem is. So his tweet saying sexual assault affects LGBTQ people Let's us know how rampant sexual assault is. How? He's, he's just making a comment. He's not telling a story. There's nothing. Hi. As promised, uh, I'm making this video. This is um, about the hashtag MeToo. I promised that in my last video. Uh, now this is an article from a website called Inverse, Inverse Culture, never heard of them right, um, but the headline of the article is 20 of the half million and counting hashtag me too stories of sexual assault. These stories show just how widespread the problem is, so what we have here right is 
the claim that there's half a million stories and counting of Me Too, right? And they show how widespread the problem is. So from half a million, they've picked 20, right? So you would imagine then that these 20 must be beefy. They must have some, you know, s some substance, something about them, you know? Uh, that is, just convinces you that sexual assault is widespread against women. It's widespread and it's everywhere, you know. Uh, but when I went, I went through this article, um, and I, I have to say, I'm not impressed. You see, the Me Too campaign started um, by a, a really, I mean, a really hideous woman, a black woman, right? I can't remember her name. She's got some size of fucking nose, man. That like covers her face, you know, can't remember her fucking name, and I'm not going to show a picture of her, right, because she's so fucking hideous that I just, I just don't want to show a picture, I don't want to have a picture of her on my computer, that's, that's, it's that simple, right, uh, she's utterly hideous, nobody would ever sexually assault this woman, right, ever, right, uh, and she started this campaign, and then it took off, and you get all these women desperate to be victims, you know, sharing the hashtag um, and because all these women who are desperate to be victims and they're sharing this hashtag they're now using the fact that it's been shared a lot I've also used the hashtag but not to claim I'm a victim right lots of people are using the hashtag to criticize me too anyway um, it's been shared that much that the fact that it's been shared that much is now evidence that sexual harassment is widespread so they claim right and that's what this article's doing, because um, they're claiming 20 of the half million stories, and these 20 stories, they show how widespread it is. Now, I'm actually only going to go through 19 of them, right, because one of them is, like, links to, like, a full article, and I'm not fucking reading the full article, okay, I'm already doing that here, go fuck your article. So it's really only 19, but, um, but I put the old uh, spectacles on so I can read it properly. Uh, so let's go through this, right, it's from, uh, by... Paige Leskin, right? Let's see. Let's see who Paige Leskin is. Let's see if it shows you. Uh, she's a Paige is a technology and innovation intern studying journalism at Northwestern University. Hailing from New Jersey, she can usually be found playing pickup soccer or chasing cute dogs. She has done work with USA Today, ProPublica, uh, student newspaper. Uh, no, nothing. There's nothing there that says. Nah, it's just links to her website. But there's nothing there that says. I'm a hideous feminist and I fucking hate men, but so, but she probably is, but it doesn't say that. They usually let it, let it be known, make it obvious. Uh, this is actually from October last year, um, but I still thought I'd, I'd, I'd cover it, you know. Um, Social media became a place this week for women to unite over their experiences with sexual assault and demonstrate just how widespread the problem is among different communities. You know, she says women there, right, just to be clear. Um, Races, levels of income, workplaces, ages and sexual orientation. More than a half million posts with the words Me Too have went up since actress Alyssa Milano called on women to share the phrase with this tweet Sunday afternoon. So her tweet was, um, if you've been sexually harassed or assaulted, write Me Too as a reply to this tweet. <laughs> and that's when all the women jumped on board and went, well actually, 